Okay, in today's video I'm going to give you guys a real brief demonstration on uh, JMRI. Um, I've only been using JMRI for a few months now and I haven't really gotten into the real advanced stages of it yet, but um, you know, I think with just a little bit of effort you can definitely get up and running with it very quickly and it can add a whole new dimension to your layout. So you can see that my um, control panel is actually very, very simplistic, and I, I did that intentionally. I, I want to keep it that way. I don't want a lot of buttons and switches. Uh, obviously, you can see that I'm running a Digitrack Super Chief, and to hook uh, your Digitrack system up to JMRI, you need to have a PR3, and I'll, I'll go into the layout and show you how I have that wired up here in a second. The other thing you'll notice is that I have a programming track actually on my workbench here. And again, that was something I did intentional. Uh, you can isolate a section of your yard or something like that uh, to use as a programming track. But, you know, I wanted, I have a pretty small layout and I didn't want to sacrifice a section of yard to be able to do programming or change CVs or anything like that. So I decided to put a programming track, actually, uh, just a section of it on my, on my workbench area. Okay, I've moved underneath my layout, and you can actually see where I have my PR3 set up. And it's actually a pretty simplistic setup. Uh, really, essentially, you just have to run two wires uh, to programming track A, programming track B, and um, hook up a USB cable, which is included, to your computer. So, one of the things that I wanted to do being new at, at using the PR3, I still wanted to be able to use my Digitrax the uh, the the hand throttle to do any type of programming if I needed to. So what I actually did was I hooked up a double pull double throw switch, and and I can either program it with my DCS 100, or I can program it with my PR3. So if you look at the instructions on how to wire up your uh, DS 100, you have two outputs rail A and rail B. I'm sorry, program A, program B. Basically run that into the double pull double throw switch run this into the double pull double pro throw switch and then you wire up from your programming track where you solder the two rail wires and then you can just toggle back and forth which is actually kind of neat so so the setup on this is actually very very simple you have to have this USB cable hooked up to your computer and then obviously you have to have your local net uh, cable running into the PR3 in order for it to work now, I would highly suggest, and I don't think there's any other way around it, the, the DS64s um, is you can power up from your rail, rail A and rail B. Here, you know, I got, I got the PR3 extra with the uh, included power supply. Okay, you can go to the JMR website and download this entire software package for free. Now, one of the things I will tell you, this runs off of a, a, a Java interface. And it does take, oh, you know, on my computer I'm running a little bit older Toshiba laptop, and it, it takes probably 20 to 30 seconds for the program to load. Just be patient, that's part of part of using the Java. So I already have this loaded, I'm using the Decoder Pro 3 program, and when, when it gets to this screen, really, again, right out of the box, right after you download this, uh, you can do some pretty neat things with it right away. The first thing you can do is, obviously, you can turn on the track power and there's this big power button up here and you'll hear I'm going to click this on it's going to turn the power on to my layout and you'll hear the locomotive um, go through its startup sequence so layout power is on We can confirm the layout powers on because I, I do have my track status uh, lit up on my UP5. You can see when I click power off, which you, you can't see me clicking on JMRI, but it kills the power to the layout. So the other neat thing, so now the track power is off, and here I have my uh, hand throttle. If I turn the throttle on, you'll notice that that light changed from red to green and I muted the locomotive so we don't have to listen to it and I don't have to talk over it. So either way, you can use your hand throttle or you can use the JMRI. Now, a couple cool things I'll show you here real quick. Um, 
where you're going to spend the most of your time is up in this um, menu bar underneath actions and first thing you can do is you can run your layout from this actions tab by clicking new throttle so when you click new throttle a pop-up window shows up and and just like on your um, hand throttle you have to set your locomotive address uh, in order for it to to, uh, to to get set so my locomotive address is 9185 we're going to click set and now all of those buttons become enabled you can see my F8 which is the mute function is uh, enabled because that's what I did on my hand throttle so if I just click on that my uh, locomotive comes back the sound F1 is the bell F2 is a long horn, F3 is a short horn, uh, you have your light function, and again, you can mute it with the F8 function. So the other thing, and I'm going to pan out here just a little bit because I have my locomotive right near my computer here. So there's the locomotive. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, um, I have forward selected, so I'm just going to blip it forward a little bit. You see it moves. Blip it backwards a little bit. So here you go. You can, you can run it off the JMRI without even changing anything. Um, come back over here to my... Um, hand throttle, make sure that I have the correct locomotive set, uh, selected, 9185, and you can seamlessly go back and forth between your computer and your hand throttle. So, pretty cool stuff. So, this would be nice for larger layouts, you don't have to purchase an extra throttle. Uh, if you have, you know, if you're working on a different section of your layout, and if you don't have a wireless throttle, if you have to be plugged in, you don't have to go out and purchase extra throttles. You can use this uh, as a throttle function, and you can use it for free. Another thing, and this is a function unique to my layout, is I actually have my layout wired to all of my turnouts with Tortoise slow motion switch machines, and I have them hooked up to a DS64. So this, because that's controlled by local, local net also, uh, we can control the turnouts with this. So to do that you're just going to go actions and then you're going to click on turnout control. So you have another little pop-up window. I'm just going to drag this down a little bit more to the center of the screen here. Um, with this you just have to know the uh, uh, address of your turnout. So in this case I'm just going to select turnout number five and right now it's in a it says state unknown because it hasn't received a command yet, but as soon as we send a command, so it, it's in a thrown state now, I'm going to hit the close button. So you can hear that the, uh, the turnout actually closed. So where my turnout is at, it's actually the turnout that's uh, sort of at the right side of your screen here. And this way you can actually see it, so I'm just going to hit thrown. And you can see that, that it uh, changes the direction of the, the tortoise. So, close, throw. So you can do this, again, with any turnout. Uh, again, if you want to, you can go right back to your hand control. So I'm going to go switch. That was address 5. Right now it's in the throne state. I'm going to send it a close command. And you can see that you have control either with the JMRI or your hand throttle. So another uh, just wonderful feature about JMRI uh, that a lot of people really uh, are excited about is the fact that you can actually set up and, and use this with any uh, cell phone or smart device. Now in order for this to work, your computer and your device have to be on the same uh, uh, Wi-Fi network, which usually it's not going to be an issue as, while you're in your house because everything should be hooked up to your, to your own network. So what you're going to want to do within JMRI, again, we're going to go back to the Actions tab, and then you're going to want to click this Start We Throttle Server, Why Throttle Server. So what that's doing, it's basically sending uh, 
it's sending uh, access out through your Wi-Fi network. So now I'm going to take, I have my iPhone here, and I'll show you this. So this is just, this is my regular iPhone. You can go on and get this program called Wii Throttle or Wii Throttle Lite. This is a free application. You can pay for the full upgrade. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see, so now it has paired up with the JMRI. And now I can basically use this just like I would uh, any hand throttle. So I'm going to go, you have to set your locomotive so it's 91.85. I'm going to set it. All of a sudden that lights up green. Down here at the very bottom you're going to click on throttle. And basically, again, this is, this is part of the free... Um, this is part of the free app. I haven't paid for the upgrade yet. You can control your locomotives with with the Y throttle. So F8, right now it's muted, so let's click that. That comes back on. F1 is the bell. F2 is the long horn. F3 is short horn. And then I'm going to pan out here just a little bit. There's my locomotive. So I'm just going to scroll up just a couple clicks. Scroll backwards a couple throw up clicks. Let's mute this thing again. So this is fantastic because now again, instead of having to purchase a... Um, a wireless throttle now you actually have access with with your iPhone iPad iPod touch uh, this is the latest this is the iPhone 6 plus um, all of it seems to be compatible without an issue I've been running it off of one of my older iPads so uh, that's another just awesome feature about the JMRI okay the last thing I'm going to show you today is I, I actually put my locomotive on my programming track and I'm going to show you how to read all the CV values within that locomotive so basically just have that set on there and then we'll do everything else through the JMRI okay the last thing I'm going to show you so we were doing everything in Decoder Pro 3 which is one of the uh, things that you get when you download JMRI to, to actually look at the um, CVs on the programming track you're gonna to have to open up decoder pro and when it comes up since again I already opened it you're gonna to want to go into service mode which is your program track operator and here you can select what decoder you have so if you're using a Digitrax decoder you can click on this and figure out which decoder you have um, in this particular one um, I have a tsunami and I've already actually gotten it, so I have an Athern, which actually isn't listed, but you can uh, find it through the Tsunami decoders because I have an Athern Genesis locomotive. Once you get it all set up, you actually have it where you can click the drop-down menu, and you can see that it comes in. It's Tsunami uh, Diesel Genesis, and I have it. Uh, this is a GP9 locomotive, so then you're going to click on this op Open Programmer button. So when you click on the Open Programmer button, um, it gives you all sorts of different uh, tabs that you can look at. And I haven't played around with this too much because, uh, you know, just for, I have, I'm just learning JMRI, but this is going to be a lot easier way of, of reprogramming your CVs rather than trying to do it with your uh, hand throttle. So a couple of cool things we'll look at. First, we'll click on the sound tab, and you can take a look at everything that pops up here. Uh, here's where you're going to change, so like your auto engine start enables, so basically when the track power turns on, it goes through the startup sequence. Uh, you can change the type of horn, so if you don't like the horn that comes default, you can change that. Over here you can check, uh, you can change the rate at how quickly the bell rings in and out. So basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make any changes here and then you're going to want to write the changes to the full sheet or write the changes on on this particular sheet that we're looking at sound levels you can also can control how loud your uh, engine locomotive is so if you do, if it's too loud for your liking if you're in a small room you can change the sound value 
you can change all of these different sound values if you don't like uh, you know how how loud the compressor is you can change that if you think that the air horn is too loud you can change that here you can click on CVs and you can see all of the different CVs on this particular locomotive so uh, you know I know some guys are really really into changing CVs to really maximize performance of their locomotives I'm not quite there yet um, but this is something I definitely want to start working on here's your lighting control so uh, you know on, on this particular locomotive uh, since this is an older you know older generation diesel there's not a lot of little tricks with the lights that they don't flash when the horn goes or anything like that but you can make those changes here if you want to another thing that a lot of people like is the uh, speed table so you can change so at the different speed steps on your throttle if you want it to be you know have very very precise controls uh, especially for yard switching or things like that you can change your uh, your uh, uh, speed table settings there you can look at all of your different function labels um, uh, let's see where is that here we go function map so function one if you just follow across you can see that function one on this locomotive is the bell which is true function two is going to be the air horn or the long horn function three is the short horn so if you don't like uh, where the particular uh, functions are set you can uncheck them and check them into any particular order so if I wanted to say let's say I wanted to make um, mute function three I'd have to uncheck uncheck the air horn and then come over here and check mute for I guess it wouldn't even let you go to function three the shortest it lets you go is function seven so anyway you guys get the idea of it you can you can change um, the different uh, the function settings for the, for the throttle um, the other thing that I really like about this is one of the things that you can do is you can uh, change the uh, the address on it so so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna read this sheet here so when you read the sheet it's gonna come up and you can tell it's still reading it here it takes it takes it a few seconds to read it you don't want to do read all sheets because it goes through and reads every single CV which is uh, fine if you want to do that but um, it takes it quite some time to go through and read all the CVs so so you can see it took probably about 15 20 seconds to read it but you can see that the active DCC address is 9185 but the primary address is 3 so it comes out of the box as primary address 3 here is where you can reprogram that so let's just say I wanted to make this 9999 I would just type that in and then I would write full sheet and then it would reprogram the decoder back to whatever number I change this to so so uh, that's pretty much it if you have any questions you know put a comment put a question in a comment I'll be more than happy to help you out as best I can thank you